Hello, it's Thursday. Yes, we're trying weekly uploads again. Let's see how long we last. So this week I'm going to be showing you how to make this Halloween themed tree. Now, I did hear from a lot of you on the lead up to October that you would really like to see some sort of Halloween minis this year. So I have incorporated four distinct minis into this tree that can be made on their own as standalone pieces if you would prefer. Okay, let's talk tools and materials. For today's project, you are going to need 8-ply, 100% acrylic yarn, and I'll talk more about the colours you need in just a moment. You're also going to need a 3.5mm hook, scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. In addition to that, you are going to need some cardboard to reinforce the base, but something like an old cereal box would work just fine. So now let's talk about the colours. So what I have here are the main colours that I'm going to be needing today. So what I have is the colours for the trunk of my tree. It's going to be mainly brown with a black hole in the middle of it. Then I've got a colour for my leaves, a colour for the top of the base meant to simulate like dried grass, and a colour for the bottom of the base meant to simulate kind of like a dark wood colour. So those are the only colours you're going to need more than like a scrap amount of. And then in addition to those, you're going to need some scrap amounts for some of the minis we're going to be making. So a written version of today's pattern is going to be on Patreon and will also be made available through Etsy and I will leave links to both in the description down below for anybody who is interested. So we're going to start today by making the main trunk of our tree. So I am grabbing my brown and we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Now if you're not used to working with a magic ring, you can just chain two and then work your six stitches in the second chain from your hook and you'll get a similar enough effect. Like so. We're then going to work two rows of six single crochet around for a combined total of 12 stitches. leaving us with a little nub. So row four is five single crochet. And then an increase. Now I am working invisible increases, which just means you work the first stitch in the front loop only, but it's up to you if you wanna do that or not. So that should leave you with seven stitches in your round. So then we're going to do basically the same thing for row five and row six which is just work single crochet around and then put an increase in the final stitch of each row. We should have nine stitches in our row. So now that we've started our branch curving down in this particular direction, we want to start sloping the top down with it. So in order to do that, we are going to work three single crochet, then a decrease, three single crochet, and then an increase. So you should still have nine stitches in your row, even though we did a decrease and an increase because they kind of cancel each other out, but they act to sort of move our stitches down in this direction. So row eight is the exact same thing again. See, so you should be able to see now that our branch is starting to slope downwards. And we're just going to be encouraging that curve over the next 20 odd rows. <laughs> so row nine is three single crochet, a decrease, two single crochet, and then two increases.
leaving you with 10 stitches in your round. Row 10 is two single crochet, a decrease, three single crochet, two increases, and then a single crochet, leaving you with 11 stitches in your round. Row 11 is seven single crochet, two increases, and then two single crochet. Row 12 is three single crochet, a decrease, four single crochet, two increases, and two single crochet. So you should really be starting to see the curve of this top branch now. Row 13 is three single crochet, a decrease, four single crochet, two increases, then three single crochet to finish the row. Row 14 is two single crochet, a decrease, five single crochet, two increases, then four single crochet to finish the round. Row 15 is two single crochet, a decrease, five single crochet, two increases, then five single crochet to finish the round. And row 16 is two single crochet, a decrease, six single crochet, two increases, then five single crochet back to the start of your row. So there we are at the end of row 16 and we should have 18 stitches in your row. Row 17 is a single crochet, a decrease, seven single crochet, an increase, and seven single crochet back to the start of your row. I kind of want to make dragons with claws this big. How cool would that be? Uh, row 18 is a single crochet, a decrease, eight single crochet, an increase, Then six single crochet back to the start of your row. Then row 19 is exactly the same as row 18. So 
So there we are at the end of row 19 and you should have 18 stitches in your row. We are now going to work three rows of 18 single crochet around for a combined total of 54 stitches. So there we are, we're looking a little tentacular. Row 23 is three repeats of five single crochet and then an increase. Four, five, then an increase. So there is our first one and we're going to repeat that twice more to get us up to 21 stitches around. Row 24 is three repeats of three single crochet an increase and then then three single crochet so there is our first one and we're going to repeat that twice more to get us up to 24 stitches in our round row 25 is three repeats of seven single crochet and then an increase to get our row up to 27 stitches in our round. Now the reason we're staggering our increases like this over the last few rows is we're aiming for more of a round shape rather than a triangular one. I would like to note that if at any point your row count is only like one or two off from what it says in the thing and you've kind of lost track, just chuck an extra increase to add one or a decrease to take one away. It's a tree, it's not gonna mind if it's got a few extra lumps and bumps. So row 26 starts with six single crochet. Then we're going to put three single crochet all into the same stitch. Two single crochet. And then two repeats of six single crochet and increase and then two single crochet. So we'll start with six single crochet. then an increase, then two single crochet. So there is our first repeat and then we're going to do it again. So six single crochet, an increase, two single crochet leaving you with 31 stitches in your round. So row 27, we are going to work 31 single crochet. Then row 28, we are going to work seven single crochet. Three single crochet all into the same stitch. three single crochet, and then two repeats of seven single crochet, an increase, and then two single crochet. So there's our first one, and we'll do that again. So that row should leave you with 35 stitches in your round and we are now just going to work two rows of 35 single crochet for a combined total of 70 stitches. And finish off. 
So there is the main trunk of our tree. Looks kind of witchy, but like the top of a very fancy mushroom. And we are going to pop that to one side. So rather than launch into the next bit of the tree, I thought it would be fun to stop and take a mini break. And we're going to make our mini owl now. So the owl is comprised of three different pieces. So we're going to make the body first. And I'm going to be using this dark purple, which probably reads as black on camera, for the body of my owl. We are going to start with a magic ring of six. Then we're going to work two repeats of an increase. A single crochet and then an increase. So there's our first one and we're going to repeat that. So that should leave you with 10 stitches in your round. For row three, we're going to add a tiny little tail. So we're going to start by working seven single crochet. Like so. And then we're going to work a picot. Now a picot is when you chain three and I pull the second and third chains really tightly. Then you insert your hook into the first chain you worked and slip stitch. So that is our tiny little picot and note that it did not use a stitch from our round. We're then going to carry on with our round and work three single crochet to bring us back to the starting point. So it's important to note here that while we have added a picot, I still only consider there to be 10 stitches in this round because we're not going to stitch into the picot. I actually only recently found out that that was a thing. So now we just have to work five rows of 10 single crochet around to build up the body for a combined total of 50 stitches. leaving you with this cute little tater tot type thing. We are going to add just a smidge of stuffing down inside there. Then we're just going to close off the top here by working a single crochet three together, which I just work by inserting my hook through the front loops only of the next three stitches, yarning over and pulling up a loop and yarning over and completing my decrease. Then two single crochet, Another single crochet three together and two single crochet back to the start of our round. Finish off. I'm going to take the tail of my yarn and I'm just going to pull it through the front loops only of each of the remaining stitches. Then pull on it and it should close your little opening. It might leave you with a pointy head. Insert your hook from the bottom of your owl up to the top. Grab the remaining tail and just pull it straight down through the bottom. And you can kind of tuck that point in a little bit. You don't want to like dimple it. But you can make it a little less pointy. So that little nugget with its tiny little tail is the body of our owl. We'll pop that to one side and now we're going to make his wings. We're going to start by chaining four and then I'm going to turn and starting in the second chain from my hook work three single crochet across. Mm -hmm. 
chain one and turn. Then we're going to work just two single crochet, leaving that third stitch unworked, chain one and turn. And now we're going to work two slip stitches. So one and two and finish off. So there is his first tiny little wing and we're going to make another one just like it like so so pop that to one side as well and now all we have to do is make his eyes now these are a little bit tricky you're going to need both a white and some more of your owl color which for me is purple and we're going to start in our white so make a magic ring like so then I'm going to work two single crochet in my white and now we're going to work a third single crochet in our white changing to our purple in that stitch so we haven't done color changes yet this video so I'll just walk you through it you're going to insert your hook into your magic ring yarn over and pull up a loop so you've got two loops of your white on your hook then pull the white around out of the way and grab a strand of your purple and I'm going to pinch it on the wrong side of the work or the inside at the base of the stitch. Then yarn over and pull it through the two white loops to complete that single crochet. So with my purple on my hook and being careful not to unravel this white strand, I'm going to work three single crochet in my purple. So that's what that currently looks like. I'm then going to find the tail of my original magic ring and pull that tight. Which swings it around giving you an eye with an eyelid all in one piece. Now to finish this piece off I'm going to slip stitch in the back loop only of the first stitch in our round and then finish off. We're then going to trim our tails off really really short just because he's only a very little owl and we need to have those hidden behind. So there is your first owly eyeball and we're going to make one more. So now we have our tiny birdie bits we are going to assemble our little owl. So the first thing we're going to do is the tail goes at the back so swinging that around to the back. We're going to grab our two eyes and pin them to the front. Now be careful how you pin these because you might make him sad or angry. And I'm going to take a little bit of my purple now and just sew those on. Like so. I'm then going to take my wings and pin one to each side. And once again in my purple, sew both of those on. So there is the base of our little owl. So we're now going to use some black to add some pupils. And I'm going to put mine not in the middle, but so that they're kind of on this inner edge, which will serve to help his eyes look a bit bigger. Then with some of my yellow, I'm going to add a tiny beak and it's going to go directly between where those two eyes are. And then purely optional, I'm going to add kind of a little zigzag for feet. Then just make sure all of your ends are trimmed off and tucked in. And you have a mini owl all ready to go. So pop him to one side with your tree. And we're going to grab our brown again and work up a couple of branches. So the medium branch starts with a magic ring of six. And 
and then four rows of six single crochet in each for a combined total of 24 stitches. Then row six is two increases. A single crochet, a decrease, and then a single crochet, bringing us up to seven stitches in our round. Row seven is a single crochet, two increases, a single crochet, a decrease, and then a single crochet. Row eight is two single crochet, two increases, two single crochet, and then a decrease. Row nine is three single crochet, two increases, two single crochet, and then a decrease. Then row 10 is four single crochet, two increases, two single crochet, and then a decrease. Row 11 is a decrease, and then nine single crochet back to the start of the row. We are then going to work four rows of 10 single crochet around for a combined total of 40 stitches. Like so, and then finish off. So there is our medium branch, pop that to one side, and we're going to make a small branch. So we start with a magic ring of six. And then seven rows of six single crochet in each for a combined total of 42 stitches. And then we just have row nine to work, which is three single crochet. Three single crochet all into the same stitch. And then two single crochet back to the start of the round. Finish off. So there is our small branch. We have one more branch to do and I have dubbed it the tiny branch. <laughs> so we start again with a magic ring of six. And you're then going to work three rows of six single crochet around for a combined total of 18 stitches. And finish off. So now we have branches in four different sizes. And I'm not going to make the obvious joke because I'm not that kind of channel. So you can pop all of those to one side. So this brings us to our second mini break. And this time we're going to do our stack of jack-o'-lanterns, our stack-o'-lanterns, if you will. So I'm going to start in a bright, bright orange. And we start by making the smallest pumpkin on top. So we're going to make a magic ring of six. Now I'm going to be using orange for my pumpkins, but we are also going to need to have black available on hand to make the faces, so have that ready as well. Row two is six increases, which will bring your round up to 12 stitches. So 
So that will bring you to 12 stitches around, which is the widest point of your smallest pumpkin. <laughs> Now, in row three, we are going to add a couple of little eyes. And to do that, we are going to make color changes with, I'm going to be using black. So before I get started, I want to remind you that you always want to change colors in the stitch before you need the new color to be active. So for row three, as an example, it says four single crochet and then a black single crochet. What that means is we are going to work three single crochet in our orange. And then in the fourth orange stitch, we are going to change to our black, the same way that we did when making the eyes of the owl. We are then going to work one black stitch, changing back to our orange. One orange stitch, and then one orange stitch, changing back to our black. And then one black stitch, changing back to our orange. So I honestly think it sounds more complicated than it is in practice, but you please keep in mind that if these color changes are proving too difficult, too fiddly, or they're just basically ruining the fun that you're having, don't do them. Just work the whole piece in orange and you can stitch on faces afterwards using just a needle and some yarn. So with our orange back on our hook, we have four stitches to go to finish the round. So there we are at the end of row three, we have two little eyes. And then in row four, we are working entirely in our orange and we're just gonna work 12 single crochet around. So this is what our tiny pumpkin currently looks like. You can put a little bit of stuffing in there if you'd like. I'm not personally going to. I am, however, going to trim off my black and use these tails to provide just a tiny bit of padding in there. And then in row five, we are going to work six decreases around to bring us back to six stitches. So there is our first tiny pumpkin. Now we built this stack all in one piece, but if you wanted just a tiny little pumpkin to, to place on your piece, you, you can just finish it off at this point. But for today, I am going to carry on to row six, where we are working six front post single crochet. So front post single crochet is where, instead of working through the loops like we normally would, we are going to insert our hook around the post of the stitch. And as it's front post, we are inserting our hook from the front around the post, back to the front. So it's kind of like working into the stitches sideways. So you yarn over and pull up your loop and then yarn over and finish your single crochet. There's our first one and I'm going to work one of those around each stitch around for six in total. And in doing so, we have officially started our middle pumpkin. Row seven is six increases around, but before you do that, count backwards from your hook, one, two, three, four, five, six, to identify where your first stitch goes. Just because swapping from front post back to single crochet is one of the most common places I find where people gain or lose a stitch in their round. And as mentioned, it is going to be six increases around to bring us back up to 12 stitches. Then row eight is three repeats of three single crochet and then an increase. So one, two, three, then an increase. There's our first repeat and we're going to repeat that two more times. So in row nine, we're going to be using our black again to add some more eyes. So we're going to start by working eight single crochet. Changing to our black in the eighth stitch. We're then going to work one black stitch, changing back to our orange. We're then going to work two orange single crochet. And then a third, changing back to our black. 
and then a black single crochet changing back to our orange. We are then just going to work two single crochet to get us back to the start of our row. So there we are at the end of row nine. Your faces might not exactly line up as you can see there. My faces don't exactly line up. I think it adds to kind of like a slight higgledy piggledy to the, to the pumpkin stack. Anyway, row 10, we start with eight single crochet in our orange. Which brings us back around to where our eyes are. Now, as we want the eyes to be a little bit bigger on this middle pumpkin than they were on our tiny pumpkin, I'm going to work this single crochet in the back loop only of the eye. That allows for these eyes to be a little bit bigger and just a little bit sharper as well. So then it's just three single crochet across to the other eye. And then a single crochet into the back loop only of that. And then two single crochet to finish the round. So there is our second set of pumpkin eyes. Then in row 11, we are going to work three repeats of three single crochet and then a decrease. So there's our first one, and we're going to work two more of those to bring us down to 12 stitches in our round. Like so, and this time I am going to stuff, trimming off my black. And it's not a lot of stuffing, it's just a little bit to help it hold its shape. So with that stuffing added, we are going to work six decreases. Which brings us to the end of our second pumpkin. So if you only want a little stack of two, that's where you would finish off. We are, however, going to continue on into a third pumpkin today. So we are going to do a row of six front post single crochet. Like so, count backwards from our hook until we find our sixth stitch. And then we're going to do a round of six repeats of three single crochet into the same stitch. So basically just put three single crochet into each of the stitches around. Which should bring you to 18 stitches in your round. So that brings us to row 15, where we're going to work six repeats of a single crochet an increase, and then a single crochet. So there is our first one, and we're going to work five more of those around to bring our row count up to 24. Like so. So that's what it should look like from underneath. Tiny pumpkin butthole. Anyway, um, we are going <laughs> to <laughs> move into row 16, where we are going to start building the eyes for our largest pumpkin. Now, these ones here are slightly more complex than the ones from the previous two pumpkin friends. So I guess that's, I guess that's your warning. <laughs> and we're going to start by working 20 single crochet around. And in the 20th stitch, we are going to change to our black. We are then going to work one black stitch, changing back to our orange, and then three orange stitches. Which brings us back to the start of our round. As this face is so wide, it kind of, the, the finishing point of our round falls kind of in the middle of it, and I'm sorry about that. So row 17 starts with an orange stitch, changing to our black. And then a black stitch changing back to our orange. We are then going to work 17 orange stitches around. And then one more orange stitch, so the 18th stitch, changing back to our black. We are going to work one black stitch. 
and then one black stitch changing to our orange. You'll note that, that should line up with the previous row to give you a nice crispy triangle. I'm really proud of my crispy triangles. We are then going to work one orange stitch changing to our black. And then one black stitch changing to our orange. So that is the end of row 17. So row 18 we continue the face by working one orange stitch changing to our black. One black stitch. And then a second black stitch changing back to our orange. But again, we should have a fairly nice crispy triangle for that eye as well. That's my current alignment. We're then going to work 17 single crochet in our orange. Which brings us back to that first eye. And still in our orange, we are going to work a back loop only single crochet in each of those two stitches, which should close off our nice crispy triangle. We're then going to work a single crochet through both loops. And then once again, the back loop only of the nose, which brings us to the end of row 18. Row 19 starts with a single crochet through both loops. And then two back loop only single crochet. And we're now going to start closing off this pumpkin. So we do that by working a single crochet and then two repeats of a decrease than a single crochet. So there's our first one and we're going to do that again. We're then going to work three single crochet. One, two, three. Two repeats of a single crochet and then a decrease. So that's one. And two. So one orange single crochet and then one orange single crochet changing to our black. Because we're not done here, we need to add our Jack O' Lantern's mouth. We're then going to finish row 19 by working three black single crochet. One, two, three. And the fun thing about these stitches is it gives you the impression of these tiny little pumpkin teeth. You see that? How cool is that? Ha! Ah! Um, and then we have row 20, where we are going to work one black single crochet, and then one black single crochet changing back to our orange. And in our orange, we are now going to work four repeats of a decrease, and then two single crochet. So that's our first one, and I'm going to work three more. And then it's just one final decrease to bring us back to the start of our row. So at this point, I am going to trim off my black and I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing to our final pumpkin. And then we are going to work our final row, which is row 21, which is five repeats of a single crochet three together. So we're basically going to work single crochet three togethers the whole way around the bottom of our pumpkin. And finish off. So just like we did on the owl, we are going to pull our tail through the front loops only of each of the remaining stitches. And pull tight to close. So we have one final touch that we want to make to our stack lantern And I'm going to use some of my brown, so same color as I've used for my tree, even though it looks a little gray out of context, to, to, to add this final detail. So what I'm going to do is looking at the, the base of my largest pumpkin. I'm going to work a couple of stitches in my brown in the middle. So that is going to serve to act as like the appearance of a base stem, even though it won't be super visible at the end but also it's going to stop our thread but also it's going to stop our yarn pulling through the other side when we do what we're actually doing here just like so two or three tiny little stitches roughly in the middle I think I'm a little bit off to one side no big deal there then I'm going to take this yarn I'm going to thread it all the way through the middle of each pumpkin until I am poking out the magic ring at the very top and 
You may note that I'm using a curved needle for this. That makes this kind of interesting, but we can still do it. I just have to bend it around. All the way through. Make sure that you haven't pulled it too tightly at this point. And then we do want to like, our pumpkins are kind of stretched out, which does look fine, but we do want to like just compress them a little bit. And so I'm going to pull on this gently, guiding it with my hand until they're at the level of compression I want them to be at. And I'm going to work a tiny little stitch at the top, but I'm going to turn that stitch and try and stay with me. I'm so sorry about this. I'm going to work that stitch as a French knot, which I know I don't do correctly, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to make it look the way mine is going to look. So I'm working a tiny little stitch at the top. And I'm not pulling it all the way through. I'm then just going to use my needle backwards to wrap my yarn through the loop. Three or four times. I think I'm going to go for four times. Like that. So that's what we currently look like. I'm going to use my fingers to like scooch that knot down as I pull. So that creates like a little stem for the pumpkin. I'm then going to insert my needle really close to the base of that stitch and thread it all the way back out the bottom. There we have a slightly more condensed stack o' lantern with a little stem at the top pumpkin. Oh, I lied to you. We are going to do one more thing. <laughs> and that is, I'm going to grab a little bit of black. And I'm going to stitch a little mouth onto my middle pumpkin. And maybe a tiny nose as well. Basically just stitching some face details onto these pumpkins. Should you want to. Maybe a little mouth for the top pumpkin too. See, I'm just overcomplicating this now. Don't feel obliged to do this. I think that they're fine on their own. But so you could have just a plain pile of pumpkins. That's fine. Or... We have a wibbly wobbly stack o' lantern with crispy eye triangles. So that's that piece done. I'm going to pop that to one side. Okay, so with our pumpkins made, we are now going to be working on our tree roots. Once again, in our brown. I've obviously tried to break up all of the weird sticky tentacle pieces that we're making in the same boring brown for you guys. So hopefully that's coming across okay and it doesn't just feel like we're randomly making pieces. But anyway, grabbing our brown, we're going to start with a magic ring of four single crochet. And yes, that is very, very narrow, and I'm sorry. I do try to avoid this, and these days I try not to go any smaller than four single crochet. But uh, let me know in the comments if you can't get this piece working because it's just too narrow, and I'll help you work out an alternative. We're now going to work two rows of four single crochet each for a combined total of eight stitches. Yeah, tiny nub. For row four, we're going to work three single crochet and then an increase. Which will bring you up to five stitches in your round. Then row five is five single crochet. Row six is four single crochet and then an increase. Row seven is three repeats of a single crochet and then an increase, which will bring your row up to nine stitches in total. And finally, row eight is three repeats of two single crochet and then an increase. So you should have 12 stitches in your round and we're going to finish off. So there's one tree root and you're going to need to make three of those in total, all exactly the same. Pop them to one side. So the next thing we're going to make is the, the hole that we're putting onto the main tree trunk. So it's like a circular piece and we're going to start in our black. It's one of the few times you'll catch me trying to teach you how to make something in black. 
I'm under bright enough lights that it's not an issue for me, but I understand it doesn't read on camera, but hopefully we can make it through this together. So we are going to start with a magic ring of six. So we're then going to work two repeats of a single crochet, three single crochet all in the same stitch, and then a single crochet. So there's our first repeat and we're going to do it again. There we are at the end of row two, you should have 10 stitches in your round. Row three, we are going to work two repeats of two single crochet, three single crochet into the same stitch, and then two single crochet. So there's our first repeat and we're going to do it again on the other side. So in that last stitch of row three, we actually want to change back to our tree color, our brown. So I'm going to just frog that last black stitch that I did. And I'm going to work it as a color change back to our brown. So in our brown, we're going to work 14 front post single crochet. So once again, that's working around the post of the stitch from the front back to the front. We're going to do that for every stitch around our little black piece. So there we are back at the start and we are now going to work 14 back post single crochet. So where front is working from the front back to the front, back post is working from the back back to the back. So you might want to turn your work so that you're looking straight down at it and work your stitches around that way. That's just going to serve to give us like a nice defined rim around the opening in our tree. So when you're back to the starting point, we are just going to finish off. Trim off both colors and any long extra tails you've got lying around as well. So there is our tree hole or, or the knot in our tree, the little hidey cave in our tree. And now there is something I like to do to this piece that you can choose to do after you've attached it to the tree instead, but I'm going to do it now just because I think it might be a little bit easier. So your tree has kind of a long way and a short way. So long way is the way it should go. So that's the top and that's the bottom. Then I'm just going to take a little bit of my yellow and I'm going to stitch two little French knots as eyes peeping out of this piece. So that's the French knot is the exact same thing, or well, the French knot is the exact same thing that I did on top of our little pumpkin. Work a little stitch. Now you don't have to do French knots for this, you can basically leave this blank or do whatever kind of eyes you like peeking out of this tree. So you can have some scary eyes for Halloween, maybe there's a monster in there or maybe the, the tree spirit's mad at you. Or you can go for just like, I personally just like the idea of just two little glowy eyes peeping with no real confirmation as to whether they are friend or foe. There's my first one and I'm going to do another one right next to it. And there are my two little eyes. And I'm going to pop this to one side as well. What do we have left? What's their next mini break? The gravestone. Okay, so time for another mini break. And in this break, we are going to be making the gravestone. I'm thinking of it as not a grave, but as like a decorative plastic tombstone in somebody's front yard. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six. We're then going to work six increases around, bringing our count up to 12. So then row three, we're going to repeat a set of instructions twice. So it is three single crochet, an increase, then two single crochet. So there's our first repeat and we're going to do it again. So that should leave you with 14 stitches in your round. We're then going to work six rows of 14 single crochet around for a combined total of 84 stitches.
Now, in the final one of those stitches, we are going to change to my yellow, but for you, it will be whatever color you're going to be using for the top of your base. So kind of like your grass color. And we're just gonna work a couple of blending rows just to help us attach it a little bit more seamlessly when, when we want to attach it. So we are going to start by working one yellow single crochet, and then we're gonna work some spike stitches. So if you haven't done those before, Instead of working through the loops at the top of your stitch, what you're going to do is find the stitch one row in and work your hook through that opening instead. And it produces this little spike, right? So there's our first spike stitch and I'm going to do two more of those. So when you spike stitch, you are technically skipping the loops on top. You're replacing it with the opening that falls underneath the base stitch. That's two, and we're gonna do one more, three. You are, of course, welcome to replace those with regular single crochet if you prefer. I'm then going to work two single crochet, one and two, and then we're going to work three repeats of a single crochet and then a spike stitch. So that's one. That should leave us with two stitches left that we haven't worked into and we're going to put a single crochet into both of those. So those spike stitches are just serving to give us little kind of tufts of grass around the edge of our tombstone here. Then in row 11 we are going to work 14 front post single crochet around. And you should be familiar with those from previous pieces that we've worked, but you just work your hook around the post of the stitch from the front of the piece. Then we have one final round, which is seven repeats of a single crochet and then an increase. And that should bring your round up to 21 stitches. And finish off. So we've got this little odd shape here. And all I want you to do is find where we worked the three spike stitches in a row. And that's the front of your piece. And we're just going to squish it flat that way, forming our little, little tombstone. Now I am just going to add one final detail to mine. You can kind of decorate yours however you would like. So you could scratch a little RIP on there or a little 2023 on there. I think both of those could be cute but I'm going to put just a very, very basic cross on mine. And there is our finished little tombstone. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be making the base piece. And I do just want to be clear here. I don't think the base piece is strictly necessary um, because the tree will stand freely on its own as will all of the other minis that we've made. So you can absolutely just set this up as a display of like individual pieces. For me, it didn't feel complete without giving you something to like ground them all together. So, you know, skip ahead if you're not interested in this piece because it is quite a time investment. So I'm going to be making mine. I'm going to be starting mine in my yellow, which is like taking the, the place of grass as we sort of learned in the previous piece. So to start our base, we are going to be working a series of rows with six evenly spaced increases in each to build us up to 36 stitches around. Once again, you may notice that we are staggering those increases. Again, that smooths off our corners, so we end up with a more round shape versus a more hexagonal shape. We're then going to continue this over the next eight rows, still growing by six every row. And for these rows, we are working in the back loops only. Now I'm doing that because it gives a different texture to the ground versus the tree or the pumpkin or the owl. So it's purely for decoration. If you would prefer to not work in the back loop, you can work your stitches through both loops and it'll be completely fine. <gasps> Guys, we have been blessed by the tiny beetle. Look how little it is. Hi friend, you coming for me? Oh, I have been blessed. But my little dude, it's not safe for you here. I need to, I need to relocate you. Are you interested in coming up a minute? Come on. There's a good little beetle. Hello, beetle. Look at the tiny beetle. He's got little orange spots. 
<laughs> Next minute in the comments, one of, you, one of you will tell me, oh, he's poisonous, oh, it's invasive, but he's cute. Right, sorry, he is now happily in my garden. So there we are at the end of row 14. It's, it's big, <laughs> see, hand-sized, big. Owl for scale. Um, and what we're going to do now is create the little bit of cardboard reinforcement that goes inside the base piece. Now, I have used a thicker piece of cardboard on one of mine, but I'm going to be trying some cereal boxes. It's not quite cereal box, it had some biscuits or something in it, but we're going to be trying that instead because I just think it's a little bit more accessible. So there we are, this is like, as I said, it's not, this isn't specifically a cereal box, but we're talking cereal box-esque material. And all I'm going to do is lay my yellow piece over the top. I'm going to grab a pencil. And we're going to trace the whole way around the edge. Rough is fine. I am then going to cut this out. And I am just going to trim mine down a little bit. You don't really, when you layer your yellow piece on top, you don't really want to see any cardboard around the edge. Better. Okay, so now I have one that's the right size. Just because this is a fairly soft cardboard, I'm going to put a second piece in there, which I'm just going to cut out of the other half of the box. So there we are, a double layer. I'm not going to glue them together or anything. It's just to reinforce the base of my piece. So I'm just going to pop that to one side and we'll need it in just a moment. So now that we've done that, we can go back to our base piece here. And in the final stitch of row 14, I'm just going to frog it and I'm going to change to a dark brown. So you can use whatever color you like for this. In my original, I used the same color that I used for my leaves, but I've decided to go for a darker brown for this one here just to see if I like it better. So here we go, changing to my brown. And then we're going to work the rim of our base. And so row 15 is 84 front post single crochet around. like so and you can trim off your yellow if you haven't already and you'll note that like mine has buckled it's kind of like warped in and out and that's kind of where the cardboard comes in it just helps it maintain its flat i do want to just say though you are welcome to finish off at this point and that's your whole base uh particularly i know that there's some among you who are yarn budgeters and i respect it so you can stop here and this will act as a base you'll just have to like push it down yourself and flatten it out as needed and you can jump straight to assembly and assemble on top of that there. But to me, it just felt a little bit unfinished without closing off the bottom and adding in our cardboard supports in a minute. So for anybody who wants to like close off the base with me, we are going to continue on into row 16. So row 16 and row 17 are both 84 back post single crochet around. So this is potentially one of the most obnoxious sets of instructions I have ever written. So... We are going to work both of those now. So that is a combined total of 168 stitches. So there we are at the end of row 17 and you'll notice that it is very, very warped and very, very buckled. That's why I recommended anybody who's not doing the full enclosed piece stop a couple of rows ago and not continue into, into this monstrosity. <laughs> That's where the cardboard comes in. So we're going to put the cardboard in next. I do need to trim mine down. Mine is both a little bit big. Just when cutting, remember that you can always cut more off. You can't stick it back on again. We are almost the right size there. Ooh, but stretching that on, that might actually be where I want to go with it. So see how tight of a fit that is? That's holding my yellow really taut. The reason I can't give you exact measurements for this circle is because every yarn comes out a little bit 
different. So it's just you're better off measuring. I did it again. <laughs> you're better off measuring it based on the size of your piece when you get to that step of just having the yellow around. So that is what that will look like. And then that is stretching our piece and holding it taut. So now we are going to use our brown and we're going to close in the back. So then we're going to go back to working in the loops for row 18. And that is six repeats of six single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet three together. And then five single crochet. So that is our first repeat. And we're going to do that five more times to bring our row down to 72 stitches. Then row 19 is six repeats of five single crochet. Then a single crochet three together then four single crochet. So that's our first one. We're going to repeat that five more times to bring our row count down to 60. Now at this point, I'm noticing like, it's gonna depend on your cardboard, right? But at this point, I am noticing that I have a lot of extra room on top that I would rather I not have, even though the cardboard is fitting nicely. So I have decided that what I'm going to do is sort of lift up the side while I still have the chance and put some stuffing down in there just to pat out the top of it here. Um, you are going to have to play it by ear with yours. The first one I made, this piece fit really, really tightly over a thicker piece of cardboard and therefore there wasn't any kind of movement or room in there. But for this one here, it's just not coming out quite as tight. And so we're going to fill up the extra space with a little bit of stuffing. And I don't want any kind of lumps or bumps, not that it would really matter. Um, so I'm tearing it up kind of, kind of small. So yeah, so it's a little more round rather than flat, but I'm kind of okay with that. It's better to have that space filled, I think. So now that we've kind of corrected that issue, I am going to go back and we're going to be working row 20, which is six repeats of four single crochet. Then a single crochet three together. And then three single crochet. So there is our first one, and we're going to repeat that five more times to get down to 48 stitches in our round. Row 21 is six repeats of three single crochet, a decrease, and then three single crochet, which will bring us down to 42 stitches in our round. Row 22 is six repeats of five single crochet and then a decrease to get us down to 36 stitches in our round. Row 23 is six repeats of two single crochet, a decrease, and then two single crochet, which will bring us down to 30 stitches around. Like so, we're on the home stretch now. So row 24 is six repeats of three single crochet and a decrease to get us down to 24 stitches. Row 25 is six repeats of a single crochet, a decrease, and then a single crochet, which will get us down to 18 stitches. Then row 26 is six repeats of a single crochet and then a decrease to get us down to 12 stitches. And finally, row 27 is six decreases around. And finish off. And I'm still going to weave my tail through the remaining stitches just to close off the last little opening. It is on the underside though, so it's not going to be anything that anybody ever picks up and looks at. 
and I just want to show pretty clearly you can see the cardboard through those stitches because they are stretched very very sort of tightly to close off this opening yours will probably be visible as well so just make sure when you put your cardboard in you've got a plain side facing outwards that's why I put the plain side facing up and a plain side facing down so there is our foundation we have not made all of our pieces yet but I am just gonna help you pin things together now so you can sort of start to feel the magic of what we're doing so I'm gonna start by grabbing the main trunk of our tree now if you've lost track of all of your little brown bits you can see the difference between them if you put them all in one spot so we have main trunk, medium branch, small branch, tiny branch, and then three roots that are identical in size. The one that I've grabbed is our main tree trunk, and we are going to stuff it, which I did not do earlier. If you did earlier, don't worry about it. Obviously, you only need to stuff things once. You can leave a little room in the bottom. We'll finish stuffing it once it's sewn on. And I'm going to work out which side of my base is my front because like even though you can turn this around and, and look at it from different angles there will always be like a front to your work so this is where my color changes happened and it's where my round started and ended so it's a little bit rougher so I'm going to put that at the back and I'm going to take my main trunk and I'm going to place its opening over the, the middle of our base and I'm going to rotate it until I find an angle that I find pleasing so I've specifically chosen one. Hold on, let me pin this in place and then I'll show you the angle I've chosen. With the tip of the main trunk, it's pointing at me. It's pointing towards the front. Oh, that extra little bit of stuffing does make this a lot easier to pin together. So there we are. So that is kind of the angle I've chosen. You see that it hooks so that it points towards the front. Please know that there is no wrong way to pin this tree together. I'm merely providing one suggestion. So I'm then going to grab my medium branch and I'm going to position it to the left of my main branch and then a little bit towards the back as well. Now I haven't stuffed that. Maybe I'll put a little bit of stuffing in there. Please note I'm not using any wire supports or anything like that in this particular project, but you absolutely could if you wanted to. I think this would make kind of a pretty jewelry hanger if you, if you were so inclined. Just put a little tiny bit of stuffing in there. So yeah, I'm going to position that kind of off to one side, but slightly to the back as well. And I'm positioning it so that the little bend at the tip of the branch is facing upwards because that is where I'm going to be positioning my little owl. Again, you don't have to put yours there. So from the front, that is what mine currently looks like. I am then going to take my small branch, which is this one here, and I'm going to position it eight, eight or so rows down the tip of the main trunk. So that it's sticking out kind of towards the back like so and finally I'm going to take my tiny branch which is really just a little nub and it's going to go just inside the bend of this branch here facing sort of pointing towards the front so pointing towards me as I pin it on so that is what the bare bones of my tree currently looks like I'm wondering if there's value in me um changing the angle so you guys can see what I'm doing a little better so let me just sort something out here there we go how's that so there's the front of my tree there like so so that's what my tree branches look like at this point here now I am going to take our tree hole I'm not trying to be rude I just don't know what else to call it uh, and I'm going to pin it to the front of my tree so that's where that will go if you've already put eyes on make sure that you've oriented your tree correctly then we just have these three little roots so our finishing off point on each of the roots I try to treat as like the top and I'm going to put one front and center then I'm going to put one off opposite this branch here it's kind of how trees work evenly spaced is fine here like you don't have to overthink it too much I'm all out of pins on my turtle and then I'm going to put another one over to the side here there we go it's all kind of coming together now a little bit so the little owl is going to go just here honestly it could go there or there it can go anywhere you like but i'm going to put mine right here in this little kind of branch comfy comfy place i don't know if we can see that properly from that angle but it's it's really cute then i'm putting my gravestone back here do i want it in front of that root or behind it so i'm going to move this root forward why we always pin things before we sew them so that we can like 
play around with a little bit because I think I want the gravestone in the back. Just a couple of pins in there just to hold it in place because I definitely like that as more of a background thing. And then my stack o' lantern kind of sits off in a really funny angle now that I've got this more raised thing to work with. It's going to go here though in this little alcove and I'm going to try and make it so that it's got a flat base when I sew it on. We'll see how we go. Maybe by anchoring it to the tree up here. So that is all of our pieces so far. So one of the major things I think missing from this particular piece at the moment are the leaves. So we're just going to stop and we're going to make a whole bunch of those now. So for my leaves I've picked this lovely autumnal colour and cards on the table I don't really think our trees do the whole shedding thing quite the same way as northern hemisphere trees do. I don't know if it's a northern hemisphere thing or just I only know it in the context of American fall so forgive me my ignorance on that one but uh, I did I really like the vibe the spooky vibe that all the fallen leaves gives so we're gonna make a whole bunch of them today you could honestly use a variety of colors for it depending on what kind of vibe you want to go for but anyway we make these leaves by making a magic ring then into this ring we are going to work a single crochet and then a pico, which means we chain three and then slip stitch into the first chain that we made. So it creates a little point and then single crochet back into the magic ring. So I'm going to repeat the pico and the single crochet four more times. So we have five points in total. So there's our five little points and our final single crochet. Then we're going to pull our magic ring tight, like so. I am just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet. I think I just picked up the back loop there, so you don't need to be too precious about it. I'm going to grab both my starting tail and my active strand, and I'm going to chain two using both strands. So that serves the purpose of getting the tail out from where you'll have to weave it in somewhere down to like the base of the stem which is just better for everyone and then I'm going to finish off and I'm going to tie these two ends together I don't know if that does anything but it makes me feel better and I'm gonna double knot it for the same exact reason so I'm feeling really secure about this now and I'm going to trim off those two tails leaving me with this I think it's quite a lovely little like autumn leaf. So on my original I think I put 10 of these on there. You can make as few or as many as you like but you might want some to rest on the base of your piece or you might want some still attached to the tree. Honestly the more leaves you add the more delightful it seems to get so I'm gonna whip up like 10 or so of them now. So now I have this little pile of leaves we're going to reset the camera so you can see it again. Now we just take our little leaves and we pin them where they work the best. So for me, I start by just like having them near the ends of the points of our branches. And honestly, I do think that the more leaves you add, the more magical this gets. And then I'm going to place like a couple on the ground. It is full after all. And don't forget that this is meant to be 360 degree experience, so we'll chuck another one back here. It's kind of like a little secret leaf and no one has to know. And pop another one up here, I think. And just add as many leaves as you like. And just remember that random distribution does not mean even distribution. So you can have a couple close to each other and a couple more spread out. And what's really nice about this is it gives the shadow that it throws, kind of like this very dappled sunshine through the trees type appearance. That's kind of like a rough draft on the positioning. And now we're just going to sew it together. So I'm not going to unpin most of this because I don't like to fuss with it too much once it is attached. But I am going to take off the pumpkins and the gravestone is blocking me at the moment. But I'm going to use pins to mark the top of where I want each root to be. 
and the bottom of where I want the roots to sit. So then I can take this off and reposition it later. So I've got my marker pins there. I can do the same thing by saying by leaving a marker pin there for my leaf. One for the top, one for the bottom. So that's where my other one goes. There we go. So we want another leaf back here. The top of the root, bottom of the root. And now we can unpin it. So now those roots aren't in the way. And I do need to take the rest of the leaves off as well. Okay, so having stripped our tree back as much as I need to to access where I need to sew everything on, I'm going to thread my needle with some brown. And I'm going to start by sewing all of the branches to the tree. Now the good news is about sewing this, particularly if you're not a huge fan of sewing, is that lumps and bumps kind of add to the character of it. So you don't need to worry about getting anything too smooth if you need the practice. It's a good piece to practice on. You could also unpin this from the base as well if that's easier for you. I personally don't find that it makes a huge difference for me, particularly as I'm filming anyway, and so having it held still by the base kind of, I think, helps me film a little better. So that includes the little tiny branch as well as the larger branches. Ah, we just lost another leaf. So with all the branches sewed on, I am now going to sew around the edge of our tree's face. Still using my brown at this point. After this we will be swapping to a different colour. With the branches and the face sewn on, we still haven't attached our tree to the base and we're going to do that next. So we actually do that before we sew the roots on or anything else just to help anchor our tree down. In what might seem like an unusual move, we're not going to use our tree color to do that. We're actually going to use our grass color. And I'm literally just going to sew around through every single stitch around the base of this tree. I'm going to leave a little opening and we'll be adding some stuffing through it as well. So I'm going to leave the opening around the back just because just in case I get messy with it, I want to be able to hide it. And we're going to sew our tree to the base. Feel free to use some of those back loops to help you like space your stitches and, and just really anchor things but it's important that every single stitch around the base of the tree gets sewn down. So the reason we're using yellow is because where you can see these little stitches they kind of look like little blades of grass and I kind of like that that kind of blends the tree into its surroundings and, and just anchors it I think all in the same kind of place actually thought it would be really cute to have this tree attached to the top of a beanie. It's not really my vibe, but if any of you try it, do send me a photo. I would love to see it. So then we're just going to finish stuffing the tree in the gap that I've left and finish sewing that shut. Okay, and so that's that little grass type stitching that I was talking to you about. Notice the messier it is, the more it kind of looks like, like grass. This is a little too regular, but it'll do the job. We are now going to reattach the roots. So we've already got our marks where we liked our roots before. We'll leave our leaf markings in. And I'm going to pin my roots back into place here. I'm not stuffing them, but that's because we're going to have to like pull and stretch and distort them a little bit to get them to fit around the tree where we want them. So you'll note that I'm pinning each root in four different places. I'm pinning the top to the tree, the bottom to the base, and then I'm stretching out the sides to where the tree meets the base and I'm pinning them there. So it is distorting the root a little bit, but it's helping kind of anchor this tree in the space. So top to the tree, bottom to the base, and then one side down and the other side down. So that's all three roots anchored in. So we're going to sew these roots on in a very particular way. First off, we're going to need a little bit more of our tree color. 
little bit more of our tree color and we are going to sew on around the top of each root to the tree so we're not sewing on any of this bit not sewing on any of this bit we are just sewing the top of each root to the tree Hope you like it back up there guys i thought it might be easy for you to see so then once again in our yellow i'm going to go around the long side of each root and sew it to the base and it's perfectly fine in fact it's encouraged for these little stitches to be visible because once again it's just adding that slight grassiness Now those roots are all sewn down so still in our yellow we are going to pin and sew our minis in place so that in oh, the pin hit the cardboard and made a horrible sound blah. um blah. so that includes the gravestone which i've pinned back in place at the side there and our little owl i'm going to sew here in the branches of the tree and then I'm going to try and get this pumpkin to sit up straight. And that's going to involve, I think, me sewing it partly to the base and partly to the tree. So he's going to hover a little bit, but I think it's going to be fine. Now, while I'm at it, sewing those three things on, I'm also going to start sewing my leaves back on. Now, just a note about the leaves. You can absolutely sew them in place. Or I think it could be a really fun idea if you, like, pinned them in place and had, like, 31 of them. And then you could, like, pull one leaf off and attach it back to the base every day during October to act as like a cute little calendar like you'd end up with a pile of leaves around the base of your tree and then just every day you'd be like oh that's another one Boop. Boop. anyway I just thought that's a cute idea I'm gonna sew mine in place <laughs> Okay, so it's Thursday afternoon, like literally four o'clock, and this video is meant to be uploaded tonight, so for all of you to see, but I'm looking at this tree and it's just missing something, so I have decided to cut this deadline as clo the closest I think I've ever cut any deadline, and I've decided we're going to make a tiny bat for one of the branches, so we're going to get on that right now. Okay, I think it took me longer to pick a colour to use than it did to actually design the bat. But time is getting away from me, so I've decided to go with just a different shade of purple. Which means I am going to be lifting up my backing card here. Ooh, behind the curtain! So that you can see what I am doing. So I'm going to grab the colour I want to use for my bat. And we're going to start by making his body. So that means we do a magic ring of six. And then in the next row, we're going to build him some tiny, tiny feet. So it starts with a single crochet. Then we're going to work a treble crochet or triple crochet into the next stitch. So, so you work a treble crochet by yarning over your hook twice. 
inserting through the stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop. So you have four loops in total on your hook. You then yarn over and pull through two loops at a time. So one, two, three. Three times completing your stitch. So there is our treble crochet there. You'll notice that it's a lot larger than the other stitches we've been using. We're then going to work two single crochet. And you'll note that by using the shorter single crochet right next to the treble crochet, we're causing it to fold over and form this kind of tiny little bobble, which is the first foot. So now we're going to work another treble crochet. Like so. And then a final single crochet to bring us back to the beginning of our round. So there are our tiny batty feet. And now we need to build up the body a little bit. Row three is six single crochet around. Then row four is a single crochet, an increase, two single crochet, an increase, And then a single crochet to get us back to the start of our row. So your round should now have eight stitches in it. And row five is eight single crochet around. Like so. Now I am going to put, I'm going to stop and I'm going to stuff this tail down inside. And I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing as well just to help him hold his shape. That brings us to round six. Now, round six has a lot going on. We're going to be closing off the head as well as adding a couple of tiny pointy ears. So we start with two single crochet. And then a decrease. We're then going to work a single crochet and then a picot. This is our first little ear. Then a single crochet and a second picot. Then finally a decrease to finish off the round. And finish off. Now this looks ridiculous, I understand, but we're going to take our tail and pull it through the front loops only, each stitch remaining the whole way around. That means you have to be careful to get the one that's sitting between the ears. And pull tight to close. Now I appreciate that this looks like, I don't even know, it doesn't look like anything. <laughs> but it will in just a moment. So we are now going to make some tiny wings. I'm going to be using my purple again, but feel free to change colours if you prefer. And these are constructed the same way we do our owl wings, just with a few extra stitches. So I'm going to start by chaining five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm then going to turn and start in the second chain from my hook and work four single crochet back along the chains. Chain one and turn. We're going to work three single crochet. leaving that final stitch unworked, chain one and turn. So row four is a slip stitch and then two single crochet. Chain one and turn and then two single crochet, leaving that slip stitch unworked, chain one and turn and then finally two slip stitches and finish off. So there is our first little batty wing and I'm going to make another one of them now, just like that. Now this little edge here is the bit that's actually going to attach to the body, not this side here like you might think. So I'm going to take our starting tail and just weave it down so that the two tails are in the same spot. So just in and out between the stitches. Yeah, close enough. So there's one and I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. So there's two little wings. Pop those to one side. Now the good news here, 
or it might be bad news if you really didn't enjoy it. The good news is that the eyes of the bat are exactly the same as the eyes of the owl, so we're just going to make a pair of those now. And now all we have to do is assemble our tiny bat. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black and I'm going to sew a tiny pupil onto each one of my eyes before we attach them because yeah, we did, we did it the other way around with the owl. So it doesn't make a huge difference if you want to attach them first. Just sometimes this way is easier. And we're now going to pin on and attach our wings. So if you look at the side of your bat, you'll know that the ears are sort of closer to one side than the other. The side that they're close to is kind of the back. So looking at the side, I'm going to take the short edge of the wing and I'm going to pin it to the slope of the leg, like so. Come here, tortoise, I need you. Yeah, I thought your job was done as well, mate, sorry. There. The same thing on the other side, lining up that short edge with kind of this little slope of the leg. And I'm just going to sew those on. See, a week ago when I first filmed this tree, I was like, oh, maybe it needs a bat. It used to have a ghost, actually, hanging from one of the branches. But I started getting a weird vibe from the ghost. So I just decided to, like, go with my gut feeling and remove it. But, yeah. And then I was just like, oh, I know, I should put a bat there. And then I sort of went away for the weekend. And then I was editing all week. And it was just a matter of like, huh, we never did go back and fix that, did we? So now here I am, hours before deadline, still filming. I think this is the closest I've ever, ever cut it. I hope he's worth it. I hope you guys love him. I'm just going to weave all of my ends in because he's looking a little hairy. Come on now, this video is definitely already long enough. Why are we doing this? Because it needs it. It needs it. Okay, so there is our little batty body. Now you don't have to use the eyes that I'm using for this because I think some little black ones could be cute. He could be stitched with these little wings folded up and asleep. But I'm going to be pinning and sewing my eyes in place. Keeping in mind that they do have to like wrap around the head because the head is tiny and the eyes are huge. Really, really big. And I am deliberately making my bat a little bit cranky and sewing those on too. Then with the eyes on, I'm going to use a little bit of pink to sew on a nose. Now for the nose, it can be a proper full-fledged triangle, going for that vampire bat look. It can be a tiny little pink spot, just barely hinting that a nose exists at all. I think I'm going to try for a triangle today, so you can let me know how I go. Okay, so the triangle, and then a line down the middle to make sure he has nostrils. There we go. What do you think? I think he's cute. I think he's a little cutie pie. So, I'm then just going to pull my tree in from over here and attach him. Let me tilt, let me tilt the tree. Right, and I think I'm going to attach him right here, hanging from this tree branch. There we go.
that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know that it's a little bit different from the patterns I normally design. I do have another one that's kind of of a similar style, this time involving like a cauldron and a little cat and a little toad. So if enough people seem to be enjoying this one, I'll probably release that one closer to the end of October. Okay, bye!